on the last two sales I've made, I've saved my buyers a combined $180,000. I wanna share with you guys how these deals went down today, and then you can be the judge if December is a good time to buy a home. Welcome to the O5 stack here at Enzo. So any home that ends in O5 is gonna have this similar view. We have east facing views, really cool city views, as well as a straight shot down Westlake to downtown. This is a really cool unit because Enzo is kind of a circular building. So it feels so big and spacious in here. We've got floor to ceiling windows, the kitchen with a really cool paneled overhang light feature, Bosch appliances and then two bedrooms and two bathrooms. And this is one of the largest primary bedrooms I have come across in high rise living. It's so big. And one of the best bathrooms I've seen. We've got the whole five piece bath shower, floating double sink vanity, soaking tub that ends with your walk-in closet that is really big, bigger than you'd think with custom built-ins, everything. And off the living space, we have this covered balcony with views of Lake Union. So I show you guys a lot of homes for sale. I don't know if I've ever shown you a home that I've sold. With this buyer, we submitted a couple of offers on different buildings, but he wanted a deal. So we were out looking for a deal and here we were able to get the seller down $125,000. So they originally listed at 1.2 million and after a couple weeks on, we offered and they didn't accept it. So we waited a couple more weeks, offered again, and we ended up getting them right at a million seventy-five. Now, does that make me a miracle worker that got my client this house for $130,000 less than market value? No. Of course, the home wasn't worth $1.2 million, but at a price per square foot of $774 compared to the last two bedroom sales in the building, he is doing pretty good. Now, another sale I recently made that I'm excited to tell you guys about that saved my buyer a ton of money was at Insignia. My buyer came to me knowing she wanted to live within a two to three block radius in South Lake Union, which really limited where she could live. It basically meant Enzo, Cosmopolitan, kind of, 2200 Westlake, Veer Lofts, and Insignia, which is kind of bell town but just a block or two away from south lake union so we're counting it after touring all of these her dream building she really wanted to be in was insignia amazing amenities two rooftop decks lap swimming pool hot tub sauna spa a gym that looks like an equinox it's a well-loved building she really wanted a two bedroom but knew it probably wasn't going to be possible given the fact that within the last five years there's only been one two bedroom that sold for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars and i think that actually was four or five years ago. Things had just appreciated. She was maybe gonna be priced out of what she wanted, but I think you guys know where this is going. Then a two bedroom home hit the market for $800,000. It had only been on a couple of days, so I knew it was gonna be kind of hard to get this one down. So I didn't wanna get my buyer's hopes up, but I said, hey, I think we should go see this just in case. It's a long shot, but maybe we can get them down within your budget. So the first thing I did in this situation was look up how much money did the seller buy this for? How long ago did they buy this unit and how much of a mortgage do they have on it? To my dismay, they bought it last year for $890,000 and they were selling it for $800,000. They're already selling it for a $90,000 loss. But I'm like, you know what? You never know. Sometimes in these situations, people who are losing money on real estate, they're losing money because they can afford to lose money. We don't know their situation, but if they really didn't want to lose that money, they probably would stay put or they would rent the condo out. I'm not the one that helped them buy it. It's not my problem that they're losing that money. So first thing I did was call the agent and I just made that expectation up front. Like, hey, is it even worth us going to go see? I don't want to waste everyone's time. And I was surprised. You actually said, you know, I don't know how much less he would take. I think he would come down in price. And even though it had been on the market only a couple of days, I actually used this to my advantage, which usually does not work. Usually if it's only been on a couple days, the seller is like, no, I'm gonna stay on and see if I'm gonna get a higher offer. But in the case of Insignia specifically, they've had a lot of units lately with 
really long average days on market. And there's two reasons for this. The building number one has been going through a litigation. This is common in new construction HOAs. After the builder warranty is almost up, there are things that have gone wrong in the building. The HOA sues the builder for those things to try and get extra money before the warranty's up. This happens in pretty much every building in Seattle. It's not that there's anything crazy, crazy wrong with the building. There's things wrong with every big building. Things just things just go wrong, okay? Seals come loose, pipes burst, things happen. Because they're doing this litigation, you have to have 20% down to buy at Insignia. So that takes out a pretty big buyer pool, which has given them a longer days on market. Now, the litigation at Insignia has been going on for years and it's almost done, actually. So if you wanna buy in Insignia and you are afraid of the litigation, it's almost done. You're not gonna have to worry about it, but it, it basically made it so, sorry to get into the weeds, but lenders had to have portfolio loans. So because of the litigation, a lender's charging a little bit higher of an interest rate because it's a loan that they can't sell off. They have to keep in their portfolio. Once the litigation's over, I think, I'm not a lender, so I don't know for sure, I think then they can sell it off and they'll be fine. So that's that because, you know, slightly higher interest rates on top of already high interest rates, some people just hearing the word litigation and getting scared off and a building, a big building being built next door. There have been a long average days on market at Insignia. So I thought, you know, maybe this seller will realize, whoa, I actually got an offer within five days of being on market. You know, I should take this and I should run with this because if if I don't, it could be another 80 days of drawing out, not getting offers. And that's exactly what happened. So my buyer saw the home, she loved it, it was great. So we literally, we just presented the best that she could do. And honestly, there weren't any comparables to support this price. It was below the market value, but that was the powerful negotiation tactic in this. We were super nice. We weren't lowballing just to be assholes. I was like, she loves it, she wants it. She's trying to do everything she can to get it. This is just the most she can afford. I don't know if you're gonna get any more offers. And you guys, they took it. They took the offer, even though it was well below list price. It's literally the lowest two bedroom sale in Insignia in the last five years now. I'm so happy for her. She got a two bedroom when she thought it wasn't gonna be possible. And it's just, you never know unless you try. So she ended up getting this home that was listed at $800,000. She got it for $775,000 and $25,000 in seller credit. So she got a net of $50,000 off of this home. Seller credit, list price, it's all interchangeable. She could have done $50,000 off the home and gotten it for $750,000, but she decided she wanted some in seller credit. It's a net of basically like a $750,000 sale on this $800,000 home that was already priced pretty appropriately. So some of the takeaways, I personally do feel like if you're someone that's been considering buying a condo or a townhouse, townhouses aren't, you're not going to get as much, but you certainly still can get some money off the list price and seller credit. Single family homes too. It just, it depends. There's still single family homes. Like me and my team, we helped some buyers get a single family home over the last week that had 18 other offers. Yes. 18 other offers in December on this single family home, but not all are like that. I'm just so excited about these sales for my buyers. I wanted to share them with you guys today. And if you're looking to buy a house, townhouse, condo in the Seattle Bellevue area, I would love to help you. I am your patient real estate agent. That's what I should brand myself as because it does take some patience with these sorts of situations. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.